Hello, Thelma. This is Miller. No, I don't want the desk. I want to talk to Phelps. Yeah? All right. Put him on. Hello, Miller. Watch the beep this time. Oh, why shouldn't I squawk? I stay out all night on revenue boats chasing rum runners, and there's no story. Besides, haven't you heard? They don't bring it in anymore. They ship it out. Uh, being a newspaper man, you wouldn't know that. And my new cap, ruined by the fog, not to mention the seagull. Well, cry on somebody else's shoulder. I'm busy. If I do any crying, it'll be on my pillow. Goodbye with a raspberry. Nobody much, just the guy that owns the bed and the gin. Very bad. All three of them. What do you mean, three? Book you're writing. Oh. Who are you, anyway? There's a letter over there. Tell you all about it. So you're a newspaper man, huh? Friend of Pete Barrett. Old classmate of mine. Hey, how is he? As useless as ever? How's he doing in Chicago? Fine. Great newspaper town, isn't it? What are you doing in this dump? Looking for work. Any good jobs in your shop? No, I got the only good one, and that's terrible. Take my advice and go back to Chicago. I wish I could. Looks pretty good to me right here. Yeah? I thought so once. Well, Pete said you'd cover the waterfront. Sounds like a good assignment. Yeah. You cover everything from black plague to herring smell. And don't get anywhere. I've been doing it so long, the seagulls know me. Well, you mind if I get the bed? I'll tell you what. I'll cover the waterfront, you go back to Chicago, and I'll keep the bed. Come on, Gib, will you? What a fine host you turned out to be. Now look what you've done. I'm wide awake. All right. I might as well see what this place looks like in the daytime. Oh, what a little harbor. Grown. This is darn beautiful harbor. Oh, you think so? There's an old guy out there with a rowboat full of junk. Seems to be dragging the harbor. The only one around here that's got the depression leak. And his own boss, too. He drags the bottom of the harbor and lives off the stuff other people throw away. Anybody left has got anything to throw away? Oh, shut up, will you?
Who is the floozy? Oh, just the girl I want to marry. I'm sorry. You love her? Local talent? I should say not. Vermont. Is that why you want to get out? That's one reason. Oh, it never fails. Oh, so you're going to play idiot. Hello? Listen, Weeping Willie. I've got a hot lead for you. A woman just phoned in that a girl is swimming in Santa Ana Cove without any clothes on. Then send the fashion editor out to cover it. I've been out all night chasing down one of your crazy leads. Now lay off me, will you? I need some sleep. I don't pay you to sleep. Go out and get that story. From the way the old lady described it, it's news. I'll switch the call. Switch this call. Here you are. No clothes at all. Lady, right in front of my house. Then how do you know she hasn't got any clothes on? <laughs> I have a telescope. Then what are you kicking about? I suppose you look for a keyhole, too. If there are any around your house, I do, from now on. Are you going to give me my suit, or do I have to go over there and get it? Is this your suit? No. No, it's my grandmother's, but she lets me use it. Well, then why don't you? Because I like to swim without one, don't you? Now, don't change the subject. This is business with me. You don't think I'm here because I like it. <laughs> oh, pardon me. <laughs> I, I just had an idea you were sitting there looking at me because I didn't have any clothes on. Oh, haven't you? I hadn't noticed. Oh, you're very funny. Come on now, give me that. You know, I'm supposed to get a story about you. There have been complaints. What? Well, about my swimming here? Yeah, the neighbors, they're kicking. What neighbors? Up there. A telescope made them very close neighbors. Oh, I bet it was a woman. Of course. No gentleman would say a word. And you're a gentleman, of course. I haven't said a word. Come on, give me that suit. And by the way, what's your name? Julie Kirk. Kirk? Eli Kirk's daughter? Yeah. Say, I know your old man. Isn't that just dandy? Come on, now, will you please give me my suit? Sure. Take it out and have it filled for me. Well, I'll be seeing you. You think too much of me already. Cheer up. You can't possibly feel as bad as I do. Oh, that cluck Phelps chasing me all over the bay for squibs and fillers that could be handled by the rewrite desk. All editors are fatheads. Except when you're looking for a job. Well, give me Phelps. Yeah? Well, the girl's name's Kirk. Julie Kirk. She swims raw because she likes it. And you know what you can do with the story. Okay. We'll play it up big. Make it a nudist colony. Police refuse to interfere. Decent citizens up in arms and so forth. Go ahead, plaster all over the front page. But if you had any real editorial sense, you'd let me go after a father. There's a real story there. There you go, Eli Kirk again. I tell you, it's cold. The boys in the Coast Guard have been watching him for a month and haven't got a thing on him. Now listen, you metal midget. There's Chinese smuggling going on in this port, and Kirk's at the bottom of it. Of course, if you don't want the story, I'll give it to McGurk of the Herald. All right, mental giant, go after Kirk. But if you miss... Thanks, big heart. I take back all the mean things I thought about you. Now, there's a great guy. At last, we agree. 
When two guys agree, one of them is unnecessary. All city editors are unnecessary. Thank you. When you can't make a living off tuna, you might just as well fish for a yellowtail. You know, they ain't bad folks. And somebody's got to do the washing. Him, for instance. He gave me the 700 to get him across. And look what he wrapped it up in. Poorly, eh? Mm. <laughs> Captain, that's going to look very funny out of you. <laughs> and me? Well, that's for Julie, my daughter. Every time I look at this fish, I have to laugh. <laughs> oh, Capitan, you're a very smart man. And you've got to be smart these days. Them coast guards are on to everything. Almost. What's that? Looks like coast guard now. Maybe. Come on, let's get busy. Frank! Bring a piece of anchor chain. You want an addition later? Pay addition. Leave the hot dog in the bear. Dad, quiet there. Quiet. Wrap that round his leg. Captain, for why the chain? So as you'll think. If that cutter stops us, we don't want no evidence floating around. Oh, tough on him, all right. Now nah, he knows he's got to take a chance to get in the States. Nah. Looks like they're going to board us all right. Get him over the rail, but don't drop him until I get the word, see? All right, let go. Now, Captain? Yes, now. Let go. Take a look. No. Hello, Kirk. Looking for another story to write about me? Yeah. I'm gonna make you famous. Put your picture on every front page in the country. If nothing happens to you. Nothing's going to happen to me. You sure of that? So sure I've got the end of the story written already. Your obituary. It says you were a pretty smart guy, Kirk. But you took Chinese money. Bullseye. Mm -hmm. Come on, Miller. There's nothing aboard. I'll be seeing you again, Kirk. Yeah, sure it was biting. I brought you something. Oh, gee, thanks. What is it? Go on, open it up. I did. Here, here, wait a minute. There. Oh, say. Oh, that's the most beautiful thing I ever saw. Don't take much. Any news? 
Hello. Catching anything today? Oh, I picked up a pretty fair rubber boot over by the lighthouse. What about a dime? Who'd buy one rubber boot? One-legged guy. Got a sack of whiskey last week. Any bit left? No. How much did you get for it? I got drunk. Got something. Easy. My... Slip off. <laughs> Feels kind of funny. <laughs> Get... uh, coming up crooked. Dogs around here getting high for <laughs> Yellow bait ain't good enough. How long do you think he's been in the water? Oh, not more than a day. Crabs ain't good at him yet. You know everything that goes on around here below the surface? Yeah. Uh -huh. How have you got it figured? Well, son, this here chink didn't put them there chains around his feet himself. And with them chains around his feet, he didn't do much jumping. Looks like he was dunked. Seeing as he's used to it, I'll dunk him again. Oh, no, you won't. Yeah. This poor Ching tried pretty hard to get in the United States. I'm taking him in. Now, <laughs> don't go flicking your tail at, at trouble. Whoever tied them chains around him ain't going to thank you none. Never mind. Sell me this Ching. He's news. Huh? All in. Tell Phelps I want to see him. And get a photographer. What do you got in the bundle, Miller? What is it? Thanks, Rico. Ow! Thanks, Joe. What have you got there? What's the idea? I got evidence. What do you mean by bringing that in here? Get it out! What is it? Something that Ty dragged in. Come on, get half smart, will you? Do you get it? Kirk drowned the evidence, and the Ty dragged it in. That's simple enough for you to understand. Do you want me to print that? What do you think I want you to do with it? Have it stuffed? If we print one line about Kirk's vote and your story of finding this body, we'll have a libel suit on our hands. Probably cost us 50 grand. Oh, for the love of Mike. See this chain? Come here, will you? The same chain. Came off of Kirk's boat. I checked it. I wouldn't care if the chink had Kirk's drawers on. The police won't make an arrest on that evidence. I want an arrest. But it's true. Have I ever been wrong? Yes. The time you got that crazy countess off of the Laconia. Said she was expecting a baby. Ha! She wasn't even married. Oh, well, that was the story. Well, she sued and collected. And when you pulled that yarn about the porpoise that swallowed a pint of rye and danced a jig on the dock. The greatest fish story since Jonah and the Whale. Can I help having imagination? Come in here. The trouble with you is you've got too much imagination. Now you want to accuse Eli Kirk of murder. On a thing like this, you can only be wrong once. It's a great story. You're right about that. And I want to print it. But I've got to have the facts first. All right, it's a fact. I found this one, and it's a fact somebody murdered him. And I'm going to prove that Kirk did it. How? Kirk's got a daughter. She must know something. Is it worth expenses to you? What for? Gin and roses. Going to make love to her? If I have to. Okay. Say, Julie, you don't remember much about Singapore, do you? No. Oh, Graham. Well, I, I love that funny little island, remember? Which you... Yeah, oh, it oh, was oh. fun. <laughs> <laughs> how, would you, how would you like to go back there? You figuring to move? Mm-hmm. Oh, I've been kind of restless lately. Because I've got the tide in my blood. Besides, I... I don't like the price of fish around here. Eli, you're not in any trouble, are you? Why, why no. Not exactly. Well, I thought you were going to stick to fishing. You're not going to change your mind, are you? Well, there ain't no money in it anymore. You'd better go away someplace else and start over. Well, when do you want to leave? Oh, another week or two, and I'll have enough money. All right. Anytime you say. 
Anywhere you want. Only take me along. you were waiting for. Come on now, be your age. <laughs> I knew the first time I saw you, you were nuts about me. Oh, sure. Men can't resist me either. Hey, you know something? You look pretty good in swimming, but with that coat on, why, you're terrific. You like it? If I liked it much more, I'd start tearing it. New, isn't it? Mm. Chinese? Yeah, my father brought it to me this morning. Oh, he did? Come on, sit down and tell me all about it. I get it. You're a ventriloquist. No, I'm I'm just a dummy. <laughs> Don't you love it here? The waterfront? No. What's that I love about it? Summer nights, mostly. When the sun goes down, supper's over, and all the lights come out on the boat. Sure. And the summer days when the sun comes up and starts to work on the fish heads lying around. You take a deep breath and it gets you. Fish, tar and bilge oil. The stink of the waterfront. You don't write that way about it. You read my stuff? Yeah. Shake. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of cheap baloney dished up for the farmers who come out here to rot in the sunshine. Bunk, fakes, dribble. Why do you write it then? To eat, darling. Did you ever try writing anything else? I've been trying to finish a novel for five years. I wouldn't be surprised. What do you mean? I'll tell you sometime. Always. Don't let's get serious on a night like this. All right. Let's get silly. How about a kiss? No. Ah, oh, but we're, we're all alone with the stars and the sea. Come on, let's play a love scene. Let's fall in love first. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Uh, take a fire on Mrs. Goosen's. Oh, spell it yourself, will you? There came a mother at 8.15 p.m. in a water taxi. Baby will live, case of fright. Navy responsible, 16-inch guns doing night practice. Yeah. Yeah, says she's going to sue the government. Oh, uh, oh yeah, I met the Empress of Britain coming in this morning. World cruise. Uh, Mitzi Vajja aboard from Bulgaria. Wearing pants, going to Hollywood. Met by three other tough foreign blondes, also wearing pants. And they're still kissing each other. Oh, a lot of notables aboard, all fat heads, had the usual thing to say, blah, 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 what a beautiful hobby you've got, good times are just around the corner, blah, blah, blah. Write it yourself, will you? That Miller you're talking to? Yeah. Give me that. Hey, Miller, that Watt Flores is here for $9 more for Rosen. And the bootlegger wants 20 for a case of gin. What are you trying to do, marry the girl? Well, if you don't like the way I make love, you get the story. But you're not getting the story. You haven't got any dope in three days. Yeah, but she's smart. Which is more than you are. Pinhead. Speaking of me? Yeah, come on, let's get out of here. Hey, 
Hey, this novel's getting better. That new love scene is good. You believe those two are falling in love. You never could before. You must be falling in love. Who, me? With that waterfront girl you're working on. Her? I'm only playing her to hook a fisherman. And I'll do it if Phelps will let me alone. Hey, can you imagine him kicking about that case of gin I had sent over your place? He's kicking. If there's any kicking about that lousy gin, I'll do it. I get the headaches. Finest example of the old prison hoax now in existence. And more poor souls have died in torture below those blood-stained decks than I should care to tell you. Visit the torture chamber. Fifty cents, please. Fifty cents? I'm Miller from the Standard. I've got to write my usual column about this old bathtub for the annual Boost Southern California Bra and Tripe number. Oh, yes, Mr. Miller. Charmed to have you with us. And the little lady, too. Take one of our little booklets. Uh, take one of your little booklets yourself and stick it in your back pocket. I know more about this boat than you do. You wouldn't go for that kiss now, would you? Say, I thought you came down here to work. Well, if you don't think it's worth getting a kiss out of you, you're nuts. I've been trying for three days. Oh, get out. Come on, now do yourself. What's this? Oh, oh, that, that's a bird cage. Oh. Well, what's that? Uh, well, that's a dandruff remover. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but here's the honey. Come here. Oh. Now, they used to hang guys up here by the wrist. Uh, this little contraption is adjustable. They'd raise and lower it. Uh, it always fits you. <laughs> of course, they'd, they'd, they'd raise you high, so you have to stand on your tiptoes. Yeah. And then when you're on your toes, why, they'd pour hot lead on your feet. Oh! Come here, I'll show you. They put you there, and clamped this around your waist like this, and locked it. Then one hand went in here, like this, and the other. Well, hey, wait a minute! In what? there. And lock that one. Of course, it wouldn't leave your neck bare. They always took this strap and tight it up, good and tight around there. You're gonna get kissed. How did you like it? That was torture. Not for me. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Uh, you wanted to see a newspaper man at work, didn't you? Well, now, let me see. Uh, a rack, uh, the 16th century. Spanish. Oh, yeah, this was, this, this was a manicure parlor. Now, uh, with these things, they take and, uh, pull your fingernails out. And no tip to the coat room girl. 14th century. Spanish? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Enough torture? Mm -mm. I could take it. Well, oh. Not Spanish. <laughs> All fast? All fast. Give it to us. Easy now, easy. That's what we want. Dark's big enough to swallow a man. Hey, Captain, why, why you fish for shark when June is running? There's no money in shark. There is for us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. We want more like that. Big ones. Go aloft, Archie. Ah, I see, Captain. Jack! Off the port bow! Speed one! 
I'll say it's a big one. Slow down. Cast off. Straighten your harpoon lines. We don't want to miss this one. He's a big bruiser. Easy, Capitan. Easy. Give it to him. Cast your line. Snub him in. He's double back. Only boat. Wait. Miss Record me. Don't you men know enough to take off your hats? remember this place. Yeah, and I'll always remember this coffee. Of course, it could stand a little cleaning, but I'll get busy on that today and fix it up. Oh, it isn't worth bothering with. Want some jam? Yeah, give me the works. Mm. Wait till I get through it. It'll be swell here. Especially when it rains. Rains? Yeah. You know, with Fireplace going and rain on the roof. Oh, there isn't any fireplace. Well, we'll get one. Where would the cat sit? What cat? The one we're going to get. Oh, there isn't any use putting any money in the cat. Only have to give it away. I won't be here much longer. You won't? Mm 
I mean, you're going to some other fishing town, and I'm going east. Have you ever been in Vermont? No. The whole place isn't sand and ocean, but earth. Things grow. The seasons change once in a while. Things smell better. Around here, everything smells of dead sardines. This godforsaken seaport. A lot of people like you in every port. Like me? Yeah. Always kicking about what they're doing, where they live, why they're not getting any place. They're always going away on ships looking for something. Everything you want is right here. Even that book you're writing. Only you can't see it. You've been living here six years. I'll bet you you haven't looked out of those windows once. Well, you, you couldn't, but they haven't been washed in six years. There. You can have Vermont. Not bad. Not bad at all. Men never know what the sea really looks like. Women do. And they've looked out there for years, waiting for somebody to come back. Joe, I'm not going away. You're not? I thought you said you were going with your father. I've changed my mind. I'm going to tell him as soon as he gets in. Well, when does he land? Tonight. Where will he dock? Down at the Chinese settlement. Why the Chinese settlement? There's no tuna cannery there. Oh, he's not fishing tuna. He went south for sharks. South? Well, how will he feel when he knows you're not going with him tomorrow? <laughs> you kick up for row, I guess. But I can handle him. Oh, Joe. Don't you understand? None of us are going away. Maybe you're right. Not making much headway, Skipper. Keep up the and I want to get in before sundown. Aye, aye, Skipper. Listen, Fathead. We've already given the Coast Guard one bum steer on Kirk, and I refuse to let myself in for another razzing. Now, if you haven't got the real dope, I won't call him. Listen yourself, Thickhead. If this isn't real dope, then what is it? First, when everybody's getting good prices for tuna, Kirk goes south and fishes shark. Second, he's pulling out of here tomorrow morning. Third, he's docking at the Chinese settlement tonight. Now, don't two and two make four. Yes, but that makes six. What have the sharks got to do with it? What am I supposed to be, a fortune teller? Maybe it's an excuse for him to go down below the border. But it's unnatural. He's pulling out of here tomorrow morning, and he's bound to try one last haul. Kirk's no fool. The minute he sees the Coast Guard, if he's got anything, he'll dump it overboard. He did it the last time. And I thought it took brains to be an editor. I'll draw your picture. We all stay undercover until Kirk ties up at the dock. Then we pounce on him and catch him with his pants down. And you find a Chinaman in his pants. All right, I'll go for it. But either you bring me back the story or a piece of rope. Rope? Yeah, so I can tie a can to you. Give me the Coast Guard. Take it up slow. Don't bump nothing, and don't let him use any hooks. I don't want this fish to be spilling its guts. Go ahead. Take it away. Wait a minute, Kirk. Hold everything until we tell you. Hold it. Don't you fellas never get tired of looking me over, huh? Orders, Kirk. Don't miss anything, boys. Well, if you feel like wasting your time, it's all right with me. Miller of the Standard. Hello, Miller. Hello, Kirk. Good catch tonight? 
What are you doing on my boat? Looking for that big story I promised you. Nobody comes on my boat while I'm unloading except in the crew. It's what comes off your boat that interests me. You better get out of here or I'll break your back. From now on, the only thing you'll break will be rock. For 20 years, that's what they give them for smuggling. Isn't it, Kurt? You get out of here. Do you hear me? Don't get tough. Remember me? One quench McCoy? Oh. Hey, wait a minute, Kurt. Ah, Christmas has come. Put that in your pocket. The same to you and many of them. Kirk, did you ever read the Bible? What? Someone must have told you the story of Jonah and the whale. What do you mean? Just what I said. Huh? Find anything? Not this time. You can go ahead, Kirk. Pick it up, Jake. Hey, wait a minute. You didn't find anything? No, just another bum steer, Miller. Don't you ever get anything right? Oh, all this fuss was his idea, huh? Yeah, my idea. Hey, hold that shot! Hey, don't be giving orders on my boat. So I never get anything right, huh? There's nothing on that boat. Not right now, there isn't. But he brought one in and he landed him. Well, then, where is it? I'm sick and tired of you loudmouthed, half-baked newspaper reporters. Half-baked, am I? Has anybody got a knife? Yeah, here's one. Thanks. You might as well admit you muffed this one. Yeah? Well, here's one nobody can muff. Hey! Get away from that shot! Oh, I'll be... Wait a minute, Kirk, you're under arrest. Drop that knife. Hello. <laughs> Great story, Joe. <laughs> Extra out ten minutes ago. It's the best story that's come out of this town in years. It'll hit the front page of every paper in the country. I'm raising you five a week with a 50 buck bonus. Thanks, boss. If you find Kirk, I'll make it a hundred. These hit pretty hard. You can't be far away. Get down to the waterfront. Find him. If you need any help, call on me. I got this much of the story without help from cops or anybody, including you. And I'll do it alone. I'll get the rest of the story. I don't want you lousy, Reeves. I don't want any part of you. I'll get the story and get out. And I hope I never see you or your paper on this stinging waterfront again. That is this stuff, Joe. Now you are fired. Hey. How much rent do you pay for this place? Oh, get out, will you? No, I'm just getting in. You're getting out. But before you go, speak to Phelps about me for your job. Oh, you can have it. You can have this place. You can have anything connected with the waterfront I've got. You mean you're really going? Yeah, going just as far as I possibly can and try to forget what a mess I've made of things. Particularly myself. Well, in that case, I'll give you this. I open it. Well, what does it say? It's from Brattleboro, of Vermont. Joe, dear. Since you are the dearest friend I have, stop. I want you to be the first to know I am engaged to Walter Morgan. Stop. Affectionately, Biff. It's a 
tough break, kid. I'm sorry. Oh, you don't have to be. I wasn't in love with her. No? No, nah, just one of those things. That was a great story. Yeah, tough break on Julie. She believed in me. Listen, call Phelps and tell him you're sick. I'll finish the story. Oh, I can't stop now, Mac. You ought to know that. It's a great story. I wish I'd done it. No, I wish you had. I wish anybody in the world had done it but me. beside a fireplace, huh? Oh, just the warmest, coziest fireplace you ever saw. Now, look, isn't that good? It's good. What do you want? You come. Your father hurt bad. You take your doctor. Doctor? What's happened to him? The doctor, really. How does it look, Doc? I shall have to remove the bullet. Have you got the tools? Yes, but I have no anesthetic. I have plenty of that. Go and get started. Let's have done with it. Uh, make me light for me. What did it happen? Nothing. Black leg reporter put the police on to me and they caught me with the goods. What reporter? Miller. Miller? Yes, Miller. Somebody tipped him off where I was going to land the stuff tonight. Somebody did. I'm going to get across the border. Get me a motorboat. Yeah. Don't you worry. I'll, I'll, I'll take care of all that. We've both got to get out of here. You, you can't go with me, Julie. Oh, I've got to, Eli. I can't stay here. Why? Why? Oh, I, I trusted somebody. I, I thought I was in love. No? Yeah, I, I made a mistake. Who is he? Oh, nobody. No, nobody that matters. You've always told me everything. That's one thing I can't ever tell you. The light, a little cross. This may hurt, but you hold it still. Hold it. Okay. It looks kind of like a cross, don't it? Give it to me. Might come in handy later on. No. No, he's going to be all right, isn't he, Doctor? Chances are not good. We're going in boat. If I can get up that ladder, I'm going tonight. Must go very easy. If you have hemorrhage, you die. No, 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 you won't. You won't, Eli. You just lie quiet. We'll get away all right. Get that boat ready. Yeah. Get in provisions enough for four days. You be quiet now, don't worry. Julie, I... What do you want? 
I want to tell you something. Tell me nothing. You told me. You don't like the waterfront. Things don't grow here. No, not like you, they don't. Maybe not, but I'm sorry I had to drag you in. Me? Never mind about me, it's him. No, it isn't. That's my job, and he had it coming to him. It's you. I loved you. I didn't know it, but I know it now. You loved me. Oh. You just went after me to get my father. That's why you're here now. You think I know where he is. You think they'll find him. They will. But I came here to get one thing clear in your head. Last night was on the left. I loved you, and I'll always love you. Don't talk about love. You, you've been digging around the muck of the waterfront so long, nothing means anything to you but your dirty job. You think you're going to find Eli? Well, try it. If you do, they'll find you dead in the harbor. Oh, yeah, and that'll be okay with me, too. Now get out of here. I guess you lost your job. How does that feel? Kind of hot. You don't shoot as straight as you spit. Straight enough. You'll never write no more stories about me. Oh, yes, I will. I'll still write your obituary. No, no, you won't. I'll be over the border by sunrise. <laughs> Not the Mexican border. <laughs> You're pretty game, ain't you? You just won't quit, will you? Not till I'm through. Come on, Eli. I've got the boat. What's the matter with him? Oh, I shot him. You shot him? He had it coming to him. He's right, Julie. I gave you a pretty raw deal. Is he the man? No, no, Eli, you can't do that. What's the use? Come on. Come on, we've got to get away. You'll never make it, Kirk. You can't even get up those... Nobody came. He, he might die here. I 
I can't leave it. Where are we going? None of your business. Come on. Doctor, to get that bullet out of the kid there. He did it on purpose. If you love him, he's worth it. Oh. It's more than I ever was. Eli! Oh, no! The only tune you know is very appropriate. Hey, what's the matter with you? Have you got writer's cramp? All the time in the world, and you haven't written one line of your novel. No, I didn't feel like writing. Besides, I'm stuck for a finish. Well, uh, why not end it very abruptly and call it the romance of the fisherman's daughter? That'll be enough of that. That romance ended very abruptly, didn't it? Oh, shut up, will you? I don't see any roses around here. I didn't expect any. Have a crutch. Thanks. Women are all alike. Not all of them. Sure they are. When you need them most, they are conspicuous by their absence. Oh, come on, let's get out of here. I'm for that. The smell of ether intoxicates me. this thing, a desk? Futuristic. What do you think I am, the society editor? Where's the Pekingese that uh, goes with it? Don't you like it? Like it? I think it... something to say to you, and this is my way of saying it. You like it? I think it's swell. Well, it's too bad you won't be around to enjoy it. You won't find a desk like that in the East. You go East, young man. Go East. I got it. I've always liked fireplaces. Yeah. They're awfully nice when it rains. Jerry. Uh, no. No, Jenny. I beg your pardon. You know, I've... I've never seen that old harbor look so beautiful. Maybe that's because the windows are washed. I've got the finish for my novel. What is it? He marries a girl. That's a swell finish. 